It's time for another episode of Lost But Not Forgotten, where we take a look at a LEGO theme that was retired far too soon. LEGO Monster Fighters was a very revolutionary theme from 2012. Let's explore what made this theme so special. First released in May of 2012, these sets were based around some of the most classic and recognizable monsters from folklore, literature, and movies, such as Dracula, Frankenstein, werewolves, and more. These fictitious characters were already widely known by kids and adults alike, so the overall concept worked really well. The idea behind the sets was simple. Matthew Ashton, the LEGO Group Vice President of Design, said, quote, We have dabbled with a few monster-based products in the past, but we really wanted to dedicate a whole line to this theme so kids could play out multiple adventures with a deeper story. The story of this line was focused on Dr. Rodney Rathbone, who learns that the evil Lord Vampire, the ruler of the monster realm, wants to turn day into eternal night and unleash an army of monsters into the world of mortal minifigures. To do this, though, Lord Vampire needs to gather the six magic moonstones to power a dark machine of his own creation to begin an eternal solar eclipse. Dr. Rathbone and his group of monster fighters set out on a dangerous mission to prevent the monsters from completing their evil plot and, of course, save the world while they're at it. Nothing fancy, but it's a perfect framing device to create a bunch of really outstanding LEGO sets. But before we go over the theme's impressive line, it's worth spending a minute to get to know the characters here. This theme had some really impressive and memorable minifigures, and every set included at least one unique figure. Leading the monster fighters, we've got Dr. Rodney Rathbone. Bone, an aristocrat from London, avid explorer, and the great-great-great-grandson of the first person ever to enter the monster realm. He's supported by Major Quinton Steele, a hunter on the team, and Frank Rock, a rebel biker who just wants to get his dog back after it was abducted by swamp monsters. Additionally, there's Anne Lee, a brave pilot and master archer, and lastly, we've got Jack McHammer, a burly lumberjack who had an arm cut off by a mad scientist. Speaking of the missing arm, though, there's one thing that really stands out about the character designs from this line. Three of the five main characters all have some form of prosthetic. Dr. Rathbone has a prosthetic leg, Quinton Steele has a telescopic eye, and Jack McHammer has a robotic arm. These were actually the first minifigures to feature any sort of prosthetics as assistive devices. These really gave off a sort of steampunk vibe for the characters. Anyway, this ragtag group of adventurers is the only thing that can stand up to Lord Vampire and prevent his evil plan from happening. Now, as great as these characters were, there's no denying that the real stars of this theme were the sets themselves. But first, since we're talking about sets, I want to announce that I will once again be going live on Whatnot to sell and give away a ton of LEGO sets and minifigures on Saturday, February 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to join in the fun this month, simply click the link in the description or go to whatnot.com slash invite slash spipbricks to sign up for completely free. Since Whatnot is sponsoring this video, they also wanted to give all of you guys a special thank you gift of $15 when you sign up. Yep, that's right. By using the link in the description, you'll receive $15 to use during my LEGO auction livestream this month, which is perfect for all of you who want to expand your LEGO collection. Don't forget to follow me at Spipbricks on Whatnot so you don't miss my stream and bookmark my event by clicking here. It's super simple, yet super fun to participate, and of course, you'll get the opportunity to add some awesome sets and minifigures to your own personal LEGO collection. So click the link in the description, and I hope to see you in the chat on February 25th. All right, now back to Monster Fighters. In total, we got 13 sets split across four promotional polybags and nine standard construction sets, and each of them has something unique to talk about. The very first set from this line that anyone was able to get their hands on was actually a small, limited release set to promote this new line. Set 30201, simply named Ghost, was released as a promotional polybag about a month before the line's main launch. Overall, this set really doesn't have much going for it aside from the super cool glow-in-the-dark ghost piece, which would turn into a highly sought-after piece for LEGO collectors and a pretty valuable one too. During 2012, LEGO would put out three more polybags. The zombie coffin car was only available at LEGO Discovery Centers in the US and is notable for containing one of these black coffin pieces. While this coffin appears in two other Monster Fighter sets, the piece itself had only ever shown up in one prior set, which was the Sphinx Secret Surprise from 1998. Again, it was really cool to see LEGO bringing back some classic pieces along this line. We also got the Zombie Car Polybag. 
Once again, there's nothing really worth pointing out here except for the fact that there's a glow-in-the-dark spider piece. And lastly, and certainly most oddly, there was this Monster Fighters promotional pack. This set was never available for retail and was only ever given out twice. First, to attendees of Fan Expo in Canada, and secondly, at Toys R Us stores in the US, to people who helped build a Monster Fighter store display. Now, onto the best part though, the actual boxed sets. Of the nine main releases, seven of them all hit store shelves in May of 2012. First up, we've got the Swamp Creature set, which came with 70 parts and two minifigures. Here we get one of only two releases of Frank Rock, complete with hovercraft and shiny sunglasses. But the really interesting part is the Swamp Creature itself. This guy was only ever released in one single set. I absolutely love the green fish mask. Just next to that on the shelf was this chariot set, titled The Mummy. Of the smaller sets from this line, this one is definitely my favorite. For a set with only 90 pieces, there were so many unique bits of this set. First, we get Anne Lee with this incredible hair mold. It can hold an arrow or just about any Lego rod piece and is one of very few hair pieces to allow that. Of course, we also get the mummy himself. While this wasn't the first mummy minifigure that LEGO had released, it was the first and still only one with a glow-in-the-dark pattern. While this was certainly cool, the real star of the show here had to have been the glow-in-the-dark skeleton horse. This is a single piece, and this glowing version was only ever released in this set. Next up, we've got set number 9463, The Werewolf. This one came with Major Quentin Steele and an unnamed werewolf. One thing definitely worth pointing out though is that this is the only set to ever include the Lego frog piece in metallic silver. The set also had a fun play feature where you could launch the werewolf from the top of the tree to ambush an unsuspecting passerby. Moving up in size a bit more, it's the 314 piece set called the Vampire Hearse. The hearse itself is pretty cool looking and did include some nice play features like the ability to launch Lord Vampire from his coffin through the roof, but this set actually doesn't have any unique minifigures. With 447 pieces, set 9465, The Zombies, features the most expensive minifigure from this theme. This set is a small mausoleum with two tombs as well as four minifigures. We've got Jack McHammer, another zombie driver, and the guests of honor, a zombie bride and groom. These two were unique to this set and are easily the most sought after pieces and minifigures from this entire line. Today, the groom sells for about $15 and the bride will set you back a whopping 60 US dollars. This set also had a neat mechanism where turning a dial would raise the zombies from their tombs and launch a cauldron of bones at anyone foolish to get too close. Set 9466, the crazy scientist and his monster, is LEGO's supposedly completely original mad scientist and his giant green monster. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just Frankenstein. But it's a really nice little set with 450 pieces and a total of four minifigures, including the crazy scientist and his monster. Two other parts worth pointing out are this rare rifle with clip and this glow-in-the-dark minifigure head, which surprisingly was only ever available for purchase in this set. It has only made one other appearance, the 2013 LEGO Employee Christmas Gift, A LEGO Christmas Tale, which is an incredibly rare and very expensive collectible at this point. Now, getting into the three largest sets, We've got set 9467, The Ghost Train. The highlight of this set is definitely the inclusion of three of these new ghost minifigures that are glow in the dark. The Ghost Train itself is a very impressive model about 19 inches long, and I think this old-timey airplane is one of LEGO's better designed planes of this size. Now, the largest set in the initial release was this incredible Vampire Castle set with 949 pieces and seven minifigures. Most notably, this set included Lord Vampire's Bride and two Bat Monsters. These Bat Monsters were never released in any other set. This model is actually super tall, measuring 18 inches in height. The castle also had several interesting play mechanisms like secret spikes at the gate, a glow-in-the-dark spider projectile, a dangerous pit with spikes, multiple trap doors, and a boulder that could be launched to break out prisoners from the jail cell. However, this wasn't even the largest set, because the largest set was actually set number 10228, the very spooky Haunted House modular set, which went on sale in September of 2012 with over 2,000 pieces and six minifigures, which included a unique monster butler and zombie chef. Unlike the other entries in the series that focus primarily on play, this was meant as to be more of a display piece just in time for Halloween. From the outside, it's a typical haunted house with boarded up windows, dead brown bushes, and a large iron gate. 
This house is so incredibly detailed though. From the zombie chef's kitchen to the butler busting a move on the dance floor, this set was certainly very creative and a lot of fun. In fact, you can use YouTube's shopping feature in the description of this video to purchase these retired LEGO sets. Check it out. Now, although we never got any more Monster Fighter sets, the theme received something even better. In 2014, The Haunted House was opened at Legoland Billund. This exhibit is crawling with vampires, ghosts, other monsters, and even a mirror maze. A few years later, in 2019, The Haunted House Monster Party was opened at Legoland Windsor. This attraction featured a huge haunted building based on the haunted house and included oversized recreations of the spiderwebs, wooden tiles, balloons, and more. All around the house are fantastically frightful large-scale brick-built animals and monsters, including a giant gargoyle and spider. Do you have any of these monster fighter sets, and should LEGO bring back this theme? Click this video to learn about another iconic LEGO theme and subscribe for more LEGO videos.